Hi, welcome to the bathtub, where when you hear this music, and we stop it right as it starts to get interesting because we don't want to get sued. You know this episode of our new theme show, which is called New Bopalula. And that's holy, totally meretricious, silly name I came up with simply so I could use the Gene Vincent song briefly and, and uh, we could listen to it. And you should go listen to that song rather than listen to me. But the premise of this new theme series is that we do new books because mainly I do dead people and I reread books I used to love and those people are usually dead. And many of the writers I like are either dead or they're not really very healthy. They're, pretty, they're getting pretty old like me and they're starting to fall apart. And most of us aren't probably going to even survive the Trump administration anyway. So I, I don't really get to read many new books. And I don't read books by living people hardly at all, which is kind of stupid, but I just that's the way I am. Uh, I'll try to remedy it. But um, I get all these new books that I want to read, and I also want to write essays about, but I can't really, either people don't want to hire me for these stupid jobs, or I'm busy doing other things, so I can't do them. Anyway, these are some books that I have had sitting around the house for the past, you know, few months, thinking I would want to read them and talk about them on the on our bathtub channel or write a piece about them, and, not, and nothing happened. So I'm just going to show you some cool books that are out, and I'll do this every once in a while because I get lots of new books that you know you should buy something besides Stephen King and all that crap that's at the bookshops. So this is at some opportunities to look at books that are out there you may not even know exist because. How would you know they're existing? Because no one's going to review most of these books. Okay, so that's a long way of saying that also I'm going to put on my scarf for just a moment to announce that I forgot to say last couple episodes. We have more, more than 1,500 subscribers. Thank you very much to everybody. Um, the scarf is on just very briefly. It's very hot, and I can't wear it any longer. But that's just a, a – when we can't – now that we're just sort of this rocket ship to, to success – I'm not going to really do a big deal on the 1500th episode, but but 2,000 2, subscribers will definitely do something big, and we'll get out, we'll get lucky here, and we'll get to we'll get a candle and everything. But for now, I just want to say a few brief words about a bunch of books that are sitting on my shelves, so that I can either put them away or sell them because I can't keep all the stuff in the house. One of the books I wanted to talk about, I wanted to do a piece about Ray Bradbury's hundredth hundredth uh, birthday, and I didn't really find anyone to do that for. And everyone was already doing it. And then we did our episode, but I didn't have this book at the time. This was the this is a new book from one of our a writer a publishing house that we like here at the bathtub called Hard Case Crime. And it's a new hardcover edition of Ray Bradbury's crime stories. Now in the forties and fifties, when Bradbury wrote tons lots and lots of short stories, and most of them were pretty good. He not only wrote science fiction and fantasy and horror stories, but he wrote a lot of crime stories as well. And I have this is a new edition. It's got a inter, new introduction by Jonathan Eller, who's done that really excellent three-volume uh, biography of Bradbury that just came out with the third volume just came out a few weeks ago. And it, I, I haven't read this. I've read some most of these stories. I've read in various anthologies. I'll never forget. There's one story called the, the Fruit at the Bottom of the Bowl, which is a pretty cool story. Some of these stories were turned into uh, Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, those old Alfred Hitchcock shows. And uh, it's a lovely hardcover book. I think it looks like it's almost a limited edition. I don't know. I don't know if they're doing a paperback or not. But it's by Hard Case Crime, who we really like here at the bathtub. They do a lot of reissues. They uh, do a lot of new books. And this is a lovely kind of cool book for your, your uh, f family friend or for yourself if you're a big, you're big keen into Bradbury and you want to read somebody, uh, you want to read a new anthology of his books. Or give it to somebody who likes crime stories because they're all good stories. Um, here's some other, here's some other, here, this is the most interesting new book that I just literally got two days ago, which I've written about in the past. We, we did a whole series on J.R. William Gaddis is J.R. It's, it's a new edition from no, New York Review of Books, who do a lot of kind of cool books, and kind of dull, I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not thrilled about the way their books look, uh, or the ones that the Library of America does. The actual book, book is cool. Um, but that's not the greatest looking book. It's a new edition of, of J.R. And let me see if I can find my, I'm going to find my old edition of J.R. Because I'll show you why I can't, I can't keep this one around. Because I had this, this book of J.R. I bought it from the Green Apple 
in probably it came out in 73 i think that's when I, I i bought it it's falling to pieces it's covered in tape it's one of my all-time favorite reads it's a hilarious book it's not serious literature it's just a big fucking lot comic extravaganza it just you'll piss yourself laughing it's a very funny book but you got to be patient and you got to ignore all the literary critics just have a good time and, and pay attention that's all you gotta do this is a nice new edition it has a uh it has an introduction by a good writer who I would never think of. Would Joy Williams, good, particularly good short story writer, not the sort of person I would immediately uh, connect with Jr. But it's a it's a nice volume, and this is a great book for your friends who want to read serious, who, who have a little time. You got to have a lot of time to read Jr. It's it's very slow and not slow. It's a very dense book. It's also very very funny, and we did a few episodes on this book in the bathtub. Jr. One of my all time favorite novels. What came with it? is a book that I would like to read. And I don't know when I'll get to read this. I may never read it. Who knows? It's Stalingrad by a guy named Vasily Grossman, who I have never read. I know nothing about Vasily Grossman. I like it for two reasons. One, they keep comparing it to War and Peace, which is one of our favorite books at the bathtub. And it's the first volume, and there's a sequel to it, which is actually more famous, which is quite famous, called Life and Fate. Life and Fate has been available in English for, for decades, but um, it's been retranslated by New York Review of Books again by a guy I really like named Robert Chandler, and uh, Life and Fate is the, se is the sequel to this book. And this is the first of the two series called Stalingrad. These books are about World War II and about the, um, about the war, and I don't know anything about them except that if Robert Chandler decided to translate them, everything he does is a labor of love, this guy. And him and his wife have produced a lot of great translations over the years of great Russian writers, but most of us don't know. And this is the first, first English translation of this book. So uh, this, if you're big into Russian novels, contemporary Russian fiction, this is the one to really kind of check out. Um, what else have you got? He also, I was at it, Robert Chandler, I first got to know Chandler's work and some of his work as an editor when he was uh, translating Platonov. I think it's Platonov, who's this kind of great 20s and 30s Russian writer. He writes kind of fabulous science fiction-y type fiction. Um, it's very political. It's very funny. Uh, this is a book of weird offshoots. He wrote a, a big a big novel in, in, in Russia called Shevin Gur. I totally pronounced that wrong. Which I don't know if it's been. I don't. Chandler was always working on a translation of that, and I don't know if he ever finished the translation. But I did a piece on Platonov years ago. I might try to put a link to it below. And there's Happy Moscow, which is also translated by Chandler, and this kind of group of kind of uh, uh, cool uh, Russian translators he has associated with. So anything he touches, I think, is good. And that's the only reason why I think you should probably look at this book. I'm going to try to read it someday. Finally, I'm going to close off. One of the books I actually did want to write about, and I didn't get a chance to write about, is this. The Earps Invade Southern California. The Earps were a bunch of kind of basically, they were a bunch of shyster sheriffs who were basically stealing everything they could steal while they were, while they were locking up other people who were stealing things. And the history of the Earp family is a really history of American commerce, law, and, and illegality. Um, which I've, I've read biographies of them over the decades. And I kind of wanted to read this because they went all came to California. They came to Southern California, and this is a very odd little book called uh, by, by a university press, University of North Texas, I want to say, press. Yes. And it's a small but looks like very well-researched well, well book about what they, these characters were up to after they moved to L.A. and lived there for the last 30 years of their lives. Um, they, be, they got involved. Wyatt became a, like an advisor to, to Western filmmakers, and, and they, were, they were kind of sort of minor old celebrities because of the, the legendary, the legendary exploits. But they were still up to no good. They were basically a bunch of, I think they were a bunch of society. They were like low-grade Trump family, basically. So anyway, this looks quite interesting. If you're interested in history, interested in well West history, that's definitely worth checking out. Okay, so 1,500 subscribers, new books that you can buy, don't buy them from Amazon, and don't, and, and don't read the Washington Post, because they're both run by Bezos, he's a creep, and they rip off other part-time people. Um, bookshop.org, independent online bookshop, www.powells.com. I've heard someone tell me, one of our bathers said that Powells has, has 
distance themselves from Amazon as much as possible. So there's two good places to go. The other thing you could think about, because there's so many good books coming from New York Review of Books, is just go straight to the website, buy straight from the publishers. Um, they often will put their own stuff available. University of North Texas Press, go buy from them. It's going to cost you a few extra bucks, but you know it's not going into Bezos's pocket. And that's all we care about, isn't it? That's all we. That's all we really we live for is to get rid of that character and and, re, and enjoy our books. Okay, happy bathing, stay safe. We're gonna we're, we'll have a bunch more exciting celebration. We hit two thousand. Uh, just just try to. We'll have to stay alive until then. Okay, bye.